Hey, how you doing? My name is Jason Rodriguez and I'm excited to be here today because today we are here to talk about the five steps to success. So how did we come up with the five steps to success? And I'm about to tell you that, but before I tell you that, I'm going to tell you who am I and what qualifies me to be on this training right here today. So I'm going to take you back a little bit on my, my journey there. So I first started off about 20 years ago as a FedEx courier picking up packages in 30 Rockefeller Plaza, that's where the big Christmas tree is at, and I would pick up packages there, but I was, um, you know, I was working at FedEx there, and, and that's when they kind of occurred to me, like I needed to do something a little bit different in life, because like, because I wanted more out of life. And and I was, I was happy being a FedEx courier, but I realized that there was just more available to me in life. And so from there, what I started to do, I went on a quest to um, figure out what was my journey and how, uh, how was I going to go be this successful in, uh, person out there. And I, I was open to anything. I knew nothing about real estate at the time. I had no money. And um, I started watching some, some uh, late night infomercials. And um, I was just looking for success. Like how could I just be successful, be wealthy was kind of what was in my head. So I started watching some late night infomercials. And I saw this real estate investing infomercial on how to invest in real estate. And they talked about how to buy houses with no money, which was boom perfect for me because I had no money at the time. In fact, I started off with only $213 and that was my checking, savings, my CDs, mutual funds, 401k, that was everything all combined was $213. And um, so, and I got that $213 because I had just gotten paid. So, you know, like when, when I, I definitely understand when people say, hey, I, I need to start off with nothing. I started off with nothing and I turned that nothing into millions and millions of dollars in the process. Um, and people always ask, when was the last deal you did? So uh, I'm excited today because we actually sold the house two days ago and then I also sold a, put a house on the contract to sell today and we actually are putting one on the contract uh, today. So like I'm super active, it's been 20 years, I've purchased over 750 houses and I'm here today to talk to you about how to get you to buy some more houses. Whether it's your first house, your 10th house or your 30th house, I'm here to come and talk to you about that. So let's get started with the five steps to success. So step number one. Step number one is um, locate prospects. Uh, step two is to pre-screen prospects. Step three is to construct and present the offers. Step four is to follow up. And step five is to close quick so we can get our checks. Yes. So um, let's look at, uh, so I'm gonna break each one down and kind of talk about them little by little. So step one is locating a prospect, meaning locating a good deal. What is that? What, what do we mean by that? So one of the first things we talk about locating, number one is we want to identify where to buy. And I'm here to tell everyone the grass is green right where you are. There's a lot of times people say, hey, look, I want to go and buy someplace else because there's no deals here. There are deals. Usually it means that most people need to figure out marketing and they need to figure out how to structure deals, but they're deals right where you are. So you don't need to go far and look for deals on the most part. I mean, if you're in like rural land, then maybe yes. Uh, but outside of that, there's plenty of opportunities all around you. So, number one, in locating good deals, let's talk about location. So location is where to buy. We want to identify. Um, first thing we want to identify is I always, when I go to a new area to come and buy houses, and is we look for like where are the war zones? Where are the really rough neighborhoods? Um, for two reasons. Number one, some people want to buy there, some people don't. There's a lot of opportunities in there and there's a lot of opportunities outside of the war zone. But I, I typically round those off so I know what I'm dealing with. So when that phone rings, I kind of got an idea. So I spend a little bit of time, I print out a map of the area, right? I put it on a, on a piece of paper and I say, okay, this area is a war zone, this area is a war zone, that area is a war zone. And it's just for me to kind of know that. Do I buy in war zones? I, in the beginning I did, uh, today's time I don't, and the reason why is just a lot easier for me to buy in the nice neighborhoods than going to the war zones. There's nothing wrong with war zones. War zones are okay with, with uh, doing um, rentals and that kind of stuff. But I, and that's the first thing I circle off. I want to understand that. The other place I want to understand, I circle off also on that map, is where are the hot, where are the hot areas? Where are people buying? Like where they're flocking to? Um, so I do some research on that right up front. Um, because I want to know, hey, do I have, when the phone starts ringing, I want to know, is this a war zone? Is this a, like a smoking area? Or, and then I also want to know, and then all the rest is just kind of the rest. The other way that I find out information on where to buy is a lot of times I will go to the Board of Realtors in my local town 
um, in my local area, and I will find out the statistics of what are the what areas of town are selling the fastest. We call those days on market. So we're paying attention to what are days on market, right? So with that with that type of information, that kind of helps us to know the where to buy. Now we're gonna come and say what kinds of houses are we looking for, right? So the types of houses that we are looking for. Um, and this right here is typically people are starting off with wholesaling and, and we're specifically going to be talking about wholesaling properties and rehabbing properties. That's the entryway into where most investors start that are looking for a chunk of cash. Some people are looking for cash flow. So you can still uh, buy a property that's, that needs renovation, buy it, fix it, and rent it for cash flow. So we can be so using all three strategies. You just may not be you may not need the exit strategy. Your exit strategy may not be just to sell it. It is just to put a, a tenant inside there and get that monthly cash flow. And there's a time and a place for cash flow. Sometimes it's in the beginning, sometimes it's not. It just depends what you need. I know when I first got started, I need a big, I, I wanted a big fat check. I worked at FedEx and I was like, man, it'd be, uh, and life would be transformed if I knew how to make $10,000 checks per month, my life would be totally different. And so that's what I went after. So. What types of houses are we looking for? We're looking for usually, if you're looking to, um, usually in this right here on the wholesale and the rehab, we're looking for ugly houses. We're looking for vacant houses. We're looking for houses that are boarded up. We're looking for houses that owe property taxes. Uh, we're looking for, for houses that have been maybe condemned by the city or the state. Um, we're looking for those types of opportunities. Why? Because we can buy them cheap, 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 cheap. And then we make our money by either wholesaling them um, and selling them as is for a nice paycheck or fixing them up and then selling them for a bigger paycheck or number three we keep them and we make cash flow from them so there's a lot of opportunities and by the way there's still a whole bunch of other ways and how to invest in real estate but those are the ones that we're going to talk about here today so those are the types of houses we're going to come and buy so where do we find those houses let me just slide over here a second i'm here i'm here right so where do we what, So where do we find these deals? So maybe where or who can help us out with those, finding those deals? So number one, um, I tend to use a lot of realtors. I also go um, on, on the internet and I go to websites where people are selling houses, um, like a Zillow or a Craigslist or a Realtor.com and or a Redfin or uh, you know that kind of place. The other place that I will go to to buy houses uh, right now is I will go to, um, it's kind of hot, they're starting to pop up a little bit more, is online auctions, like a hub zoo um, type of uh, auction place where you could actually buy those properties from pretty much anywhere in the country and, and bid right from your own house. Um, sometimes we go to the, to the tax deed sale, the, the, um, um, the tax deed or the foreclosure sale sometimes we'll go and buy properties from there. Another place where we find these deals are is we network with other investors. Huge place, a huge opportunity where we can network with other investors where they may sell us a deal that we could wholesale. Ironically, we could actually wholesale their house to another investor um, and we could actually um, maybe buy it, fix it, and then we can sell it. Or number three, we could actually buy it, fix it, and keep it as a rental for cash flow. So all of these above. So I want to take a second and well, now let me finish here with the where, where, where else do we find these deals? So network with others. We could go to an investing investors meetings. So all over the country, there are these little meetings, sometimes big meetings, where a bunch of investors get together and they network and they talk about deals, they talk about strategies, they, they you know, if you need an electrician or a plumber or an attorney or an accountant or anybody that's inside the real estate uh, uh, industry that has a, a deal, a service or a product, they'd like to get together and conjugate and, and network. That is a fantastic place to find deals that again, you can wholesale, you can rehab, or you can keep as a rental. And um, so they have those, those networking meetings. Um, you can network, so there's networking meetings and then there's other ways to network with investors. Um, so when I say networking with investors, that could be an online or all, offline. In today's time, there's so many different ways on how to network with them and how to meet them. Um, so, so just keep your eyes and ears open for that. 
Um, another way that we find these opportunities is we do driving for dollars. That means you, you jump in your car and you go down, you know, remember you went back to that map and you said, hey, I like this area. The houses in this part of the area are selling typically, let's say the average, let's say the whole, um, wherever you are, let's say the average area, area may, the houses may sell in 60 days. But you start finding these small pockets around town that are hot. Meaning they may sell, what makes an area hot? Um, is that the, 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 meaning they sell faster. So that if everywhere else on average sells in 60 days, these areas sell in 30, 40 days, 20 days, 10 days. Like it's just like they're flying off the racks. So I, I would recommend that you go and you start driving for dollars, meaning get in your car and drive to those specific areas and let's start looking for those boarded up houses Houses with high brass, houses that are vacant, houses that maybe get a list from and see maybe there's some tax delinquent properties or some foreclosure properties in those areas. So get in the car, drive for dollars, maybe go knock on those doors and ask them, hey, what I typically do is I say, hey, hi, I'll knock on the door, hi, my name is Jason Rodriguez and um, uh, I was just wondering if this house might be for sale. And if it is, I give him my card. I says, I would love to be able to speak to you. Uh, I'm interested in buying houses. Uh, I buy, you know, a few houses um, a month and wanted to just chat with you to see if you might be interested in selling this house. You'd be surprised. A lot of times those people will want to come and speak to you to um, sell their, their house. And typically there's going to be some problems with either the house or them. And we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. So, um... So you could drive for dollars, and there's so many other ways on where on how to find deals. Um, uh, you know, we do a three-day training, and on our three-day training, we talk about a, over 45 different strategies on actually how to find fantastic deals. But with these right here, this will get you started. You you can definitely get the phone ringing and and uh, with other investors or the realtors or um, all those strategies I just mentioned. So that is in step one in locating the pro uh, properties. I'm back. Step number three of the five steps to success. So step number three is to construct and present the offer. So um, in, in constructing and presenting the offer, um, before you present any offer to any of the properties, you got to know a few different things. Um, as we talked about a little bit about earlier, is that we have to obviously know the, the value of the property, right? The ARV, the after repair value. It's important, if you don't know the value of the property, you don't know what to buy, everything else is finito. So you gotta figure out the ARV, and um, that's also known as comps, getting comparables. Um, and a, a helpful way on how to figure out what kind of comps you should get, um, and where you might be able to go and get some, some, some comps. You know, a lot of times, like right now, you can go to Zillow.com, you can go to Realtor.com, you can go to eAppraisal.com, um, and you can go to Redfin. So those are a few places, Redfin.com. If you go to those websites and you plug in the address, you put the address in, and they will start to tell you how much that house is. So if you're looking at a house on 123 Main Street, those and you plug in that address, those, uh, those resources will tell you what, what are other houses that have sold that are similar in a half mile, a one mile radius and have sold recently. So you can identify the value. Um, so that's kind of one of the first things that you could do is identify the value. We need to kind of figure out what, the first part is understanding the value of the, of the property. The second part is we're gonna to need to know what kind of repairs are going on, going on with the property. And to get the, some of the repairs, in the beginning, maybe you bring a cut, you could go yourself and take a look at it and, and just kind of see, does it, need, does it need a roof, does it need electrical, does it need plumbing? Those are some of the big things. If they're working, then you know, you might be okay with that. Um, if you need any help with that, maybe you bring a contract for the first few times. I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely suggest that you kind of do some training to figure out uh, repairs on properties. It is not complicated. We actually teach how to do it at, at our three-day training and um, we give you uh, the outline of exactly um, a checklist, again, of what to buy, um, what you know, what kind of repairs may need for each piece. What does a roof cost? What does a plumbing cost? What does electrical cost? What does a kitchen cost? What does carpet cost per square foot? What does um, hardwood uh, cost per square foot? Um, all of those things. So we teach that in our three-day training. So um, the other thing, so now we, you got to consider what is it worth and what are the repairs, right? I already told you, you should not, not be doing, if you're starting off a brand new, you should not do big monster rehabs um, because they're time consuming and there's a lot of little things inside there. Do a small renovation. So why am I telling you all this? Well, I got to tell you, there is, when you're making a cash offer, there is a cash offer formula. 
And this formula is only to be used for cash. Only cash, only cash, only cash offers. And here is the formula. The formula is um, it's called MACO, M-A-C-O. That's maximum allowed cash offer. That's MACO, maximum allowed cash offer. And here's how the formula goes. So it's, the formula is the ARV times 65% minus the repair cost is the maximum allowed cash offer. So let's say we, we had a property that was worth $200,000. That property is worth $200,000, that's the ARV, times 65% is $130,000, minus, let's say this property had $35,000 in renovation. So $130,000 minus $35,000 in renovation is $95,000. So the maximum allowed cash offer that you could offer for that house is $95,000. And that's the maximum we could offer. So we start our offer at $89,000 is probably where I would start it. That would be my initial starting offer for that house is $89,000. And then I know that I could go up to $95,000. Um, so that's, that, that is the formula. And built into that formula, just so you know, your profits are already built in. Your profits are about 15% of the ARV is profit, like net profit for you to take home. So like on a $200,000 house, 15%, if you're using the formula correctly, 15% is your profit. So 200,000 times 15% is, what's that? 10% is uh, uh, 15,000, that's $30,000. Um, so if you were doing a rehab on that one that was $30,000, a $200,000 house, you did a $30,000 rehab and you net $30,000, that would be a good deal. I would do the deal, sure. $30,000, that, that, a small rehab like that, you would probably be able to come and get that bought, fixed, and, and, and all done in less than two, two and a half months, and then just put it on the market and get it sold. So that is a great deal. All right, so um, remember, that formula is for all cash. And don't violate the formula. Don't go out there and overpay just because the realtor said you should. Don't do it, don't do it, you will lose money. Stick with the formula. When I first got started, my mentor said, Jason, don't you dare change the formula. And I never changed the formula and, and, and I've always done well. Don't change the formula. It's not broken. It doesn't need your, rent, your, your fixing to it. This is how we've done hundreds and hundreds of deals. So stick with it. It works. Now we're going to talk about funding, right? Let's talk about the money. Where do we get the money from? So number one, if you're going to wholesale a house, the good news is you usually don't need any money. Why? Because you're going to buy the property, you're going to go find the great deal, you're going to put it on the contract, and then you're going to sell that contract to another investor, and they are going to bring the money. So let me give you an example. Let's say the house is worth $100,000. You're going to go find that property and put it on the contract for $60,000. You're going to sell it to this guy right here, another investor that's going to buy it, fix it, and sell it, or buy it, fix it, and keep it. And you're going to sell it to them for $70,000, where you, you, you're going to make that $10,000 profit. So a lot of times you're not necessarily going to need their money and uh, um, excuse me, you're not going to need to go get your own money for the funding, especially because a lot of times the way we structure it is that you can assign that contract to this new investor. So that's an easy way on how to do it. So you're going to assign all the rights to that person for a $10,000 fee. How, and I've done this hundreds of times. Uh, it works out beautifully and it allows us to be able to buy houses with none of our money, right? So I'm gonna have to put a deposit, like let's say sometimes I put 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 500 bucks to put it on the, the, the house on the contract, but that's about it. That's about it. And you get that back at closing. So um, let's talk about the other ones. Let's say you were gonna buy it and you wanted to come buy it, fix it, and then sell it, or buy it, fix it, and then rent it. We'll talk about specifically about buy, fix, and sell. So how do you fund those things? Well, number one, if you have cash, you just go write your own check, done deal, right? Um, but a lot of times people don't have cash, so what they typically would use, uh, there's a few different strategies on, on how to actually fund. Uh, one is your own money. Number two is to use hard money. And hard money, what hard money is, is hard money is a lender that really doesn't look too much at your credit. Some of them do, some of them don't. Some of them, uh, the ones that don't look at your credit, they're more interested about the deal. Does the deal make sense? And uh, they have terms and conditions on how they would actually lend you that money, but it is not necessarily credit driven. Um, and the interest rates are higher, they call hard money because of the interest rates are higher, and, um, but they are lightning fast. Like you could get a hard money loan, loan done in as little as 
I've seen them as little as 15 days. That means you go find the property today, and in 15 days, you're at closing, and you could get this deal started rocking and rolling. So their, their essence is speed. Private money is just a private individual, like let's say you got somebody at work, or a friend, or somebody that you've known, and they, they're a private individual, and they have money sitting in their bank account, or someplace that they control. They're not an institution, they're not a business, they're not a company, it is just you know, Uncle Jesse that has money, Aunt Carmen that has money, you know, Billy Bob that's got money, whoever's just got money in their own account, uh, uh, um, in their own, uh, their own personal money and they want to lend it to you, that's called a private lender. So then there's also partners. You can get a partner to help you to fund these deals, right? Another one is that you could possibly get a line of credit. Um, at last resort, not too big of a fan for this one, but it could be done. It's definitely the slow track. They do have these HUD 203 loans. Now, some people probably love them. It's definitely not an experienced investor that does it, uh, but if you needed to use them, it's a loan that gets you in uh, and you can buy the property and do the renovation with it, but it is slow. So expect that you're gonna probably lose deals because as being an investor, one of the things that's important is speed. They wanna get rid of that property. When I wholesale my houses, we are looking to close in less than 15 days, so I never have ever dealt with someone with a 203 loan, but maybe a bank would. So I still have it on the list there. Those are the lists. That's how you get funding. Talk to you on the next one. So step two of the five steps to success. Step two is to pre-screen. So when I say pre-screen, we want to get to know who, who's actually calling us. So when that phone starts ringing, whether you came from a networking event or you went from a, a realtor or it was just a homeowner, a sale by owner or a friend or anyone that, that calls you, you want to pre-screen them. And um, you're going to be doing pre-screening always. And, and what that means is just kind of going through the process of understanding what is going on with the deal. Um, and so there's a few things that I want to come and start with. First thing we talk about, people, uh, there are suspects and there are prospects. So suspects are like, you know, everyone kind of comes into the funnel and they may want to kind of, you know, find out some information about you, but they really don't want to come and sell or they're not ready to sell right now. So you want to, uh, you want to quickly sort out like who's real and who's not. Um, so we're looking for like prospects. So what makes a good prospect inside? Uh, what, yeah, what makes a good prospect for you? So what makes a good prospect is a lot of times, um, they may have a house that may be vacant or not. Um, they may, uh, that property is gonna definitely need some kind of repairs to it. Um, they're typically gonna, or, um, you're gonna find out what the property may be worth and they're, they're definitely taking a pretty decent discount of at least 30% from the from whatever the after repair value is and uh, I'll stop by saying what the after repair value means is exactly what it says what is the property worth when it is all fixed up and looking beautiful so that's what the after repair value you hear the word uh, the acronym ARV which is af uh, ARV is ARV <laughs> ARV stands for after repair value so they're gonna uh, a lot a lot of times we're looking for whatever the after repair value is um, which is the market value, and they're taking, they're willing to take a 30% discount. House is worth 100, all fixed up. They're, they're offering it to you, needs work, but they're offering it to you at $70,000. Uh, so that's a 30% discount there, or less. All right, so that's a good, a good uh, motive, a good sign there. Um, another one, obviously, is that it just has a lot of equity in general. Um, uh, free and clear are fantastic. They, they typically are a lot more flexible. Um, something that, an, another deal that makes a good prospect for us is a property that has at least 850 square feet. We don't want something too small because then it's hard to, to a lot of, we always think about when we're gonna, when, the way that we buy is because when it's time to sell, whether we're gonna wholesale, rehab, or rent, um, people don't want tiny houses. Nobody really wants a tiny house. Very few, or rather very few people want a tiny house. Um, bigger than 850 square feet is good. Three bedrooms, two bathrooms, two car garage is fantastic. The average house is a three bedroom, two bathroom, two car garage, about 1,500 square feet is average, and that is the perfect size house where a ma the majority of the, of the people that are buying houses, they want. So we always want to sell what most people want. So um, then I go on to the next part. So that's the type of house and what we're looking for. Um, when we're pre-screening, the next thing in the pre-screening is to, is to um, Start to understand the situation with the seller. A lot of times people think is the, the, the situation is only with the, with the house. What we've come to learn over these 20 plus years of investing and doing hundreds of houses is it's usually a situation with the house and a situation with the seller. 
Sometimes it's just a problem with the seller. Like they have life things that have happened. Like they, they, they bought a house. Let's say they got married. Two people were dating. They got married. They fell in love. And now they, they both have houses. They need to sell this one house. This house has been vacant for maybe two months. And they, they're motivated to come and sell. And, and that's where we step in. Maybe it needs a little bit of repairs. So that's a great time where we would step in. And that's a situation um, with, the, with the seller because they, they wanted to move. Sometimes these houses are uh, in foreclosure or in pre-foreclosure or on a state sale or probate. That may be a situation um, that is, helps to you know, drive motivation. So when, when, was, when, uh, when I asked about the situation with the seller, I always want to know like, what's going on. Uh, what's the real reason why they're selling the property? And if you pre, when we pre-screen, uh, one of the best things you, you need to do is to use a script. So we actually have a few scripts, um, and you probably hear a little bit more about our scripts in some of the trainings that we actually do. Um, and we use a script every single time we talk to a seller. Why? Because it asks the right questions. It keeps us on track. And we'll talk a little bit more about scripts in a few. So um, I always want to know like what's going on with the property. Why are you selling? And uh, you know, usually it's like I want to move out of town, and then I'll go in to ask some other questions, and then I'll come back and say, "So you're moving out of town? Tell me a little bit more about that." And I build a relationship with the person that that I, that I look to build rapport and build a relationship with the person that is actually selling, so I can see how we could actually really help them. So I'm looking to find out what is their pain, what is why are they looking to move? Because a lot of times they, they they'll be nonchalant, like, "No, I just want to move," but I, I start asking three, four, five, six different questions and I start finding out just like a, I always say it's like a, I'm not gonna like an ogre an ogre they have layers so I'm like digging down layer after layer just to find out what's the pain point that's going on um, I, I want to know some of the pleasure that they liked about the house and then some of the pain that they like that, that was going on with the, with them uh, so remember we're, we're making the distinction between the situation with the, the the seller and the situation with the house so they may they may be the cause the the person Maybe the cause of why they must sell. Uh, other situations, it may be the house has a situation, um, and I want to identify those. Usually, there's a little bit of both, and the better we are in understanding just that that thought process, you understanding what's the situation with the house and what's the situation with the seller, that has been very very helpful to be able to talk to that person, connect with them, and really see how we can help them in the pre-screening process. So the situation with the house. With the house, we are going to want to know what is the after repair value in the house. These are some of the things we need to know to, to be able to make an offer, right? What's the after repair value on the house? Um, what are the repairs? Um, uh, we're going to want to know a few different things also. How much do they owe? Are there any loans or liens that need to be paid off? Um, what, you know, when we're asking about um, what are they asking for the property, I never ask that question. I ask, uh, what's the lease you would accept? if I can pay you all cash and close quickly. So I'm asking those kinds of questions um, right up front. And I'm also asking, um, when, when do they need to, uh, like how fast do they need to close? Do they need to close in 10 days, 30 days, 60 days? That type of question kind of shows the motivation. If they say, well, I could close in, you know, in 90 days, well, I may ask why. And now they say, well, I need to come and find another place or whatever the situation is. They say, hey, I gotta close in 10 days because I cannot make the next monthly payment. That's going to help you to understand this person's motivated. We got to act a little bit faster and let's take uh, care of this situation right now. So um, let's see, what else do we have? I'm looking here. Um, yeah, so we, talk, we talked about motivation. Uh, I, I want to come and say this piece here. Um, you want to weed out and only deal with the motivated sellers. So you want to weed out and only deal with the motivated sellers. Because dealing with the, with, the, with the people that are not motivated will just destroy your self-esteem and your confidence. You don't need to do that. Ask those good questions. If you ask those, you'll find out who's motivated. It'll only take you a few minutes to figure that part out. And then once you find the good motivated people, you can spend some more time and dive deeper into that deal. So, using, uh, so I was talking a little bit about uh, using a good script. Why is a good script important? So a good script is going to keep you on track. You're going to be able to ask the right questions at the right time. It's going to make sure that you stay on track with all, everything that needs to be asked during that, that pre-screen phone call. Uh, it's going to help you identify where are the profits in the deal. And it's also going to help you to identify do you move fast, do you move slow, where do you go inside there. 
So that's why a really good script is important and um, we have some good scripts. You can come and take a look at our scripts on the, the, the next page um, and you'll also be getting some more info uh, from us, hopefully. Um, so that's why you use a good script. Step four of the five steps to success. So step four is to follow up. Meaning you just put the property on the contract. You went out there, you found a good deal, you put it on the contract and now you gotta get it closed and enough time. So, what do you got to come and do for, in the follow-up? So, the follow-up number one is get that contract signed, right? Make sure you got your deposit in. And then you, I normally put, I print out a calendar. And on that calendar, I say, this is the day that I put it on the contract. I say, for, uh, for example, I put it on the contract on the 30th, and I'm closing on the, 20, uh, on the 20th. Excuse me. I put it on the contract on the 1st, and I'm closing on the 20th. Meaning, I have 20 days to close this bad boy. The clock is ticking. So the first thing I do is I, I get that, that property on the contract, I build out this calendar, and then I will say uh, some of the common things that need to get done on there is get the title check. So if I'm using an attorney, I'll give it to my attorney and I'll tell them to go check the title. If I'm using it myself, if I'm, excuse me, if I'm going to um, just have a title company do it for me, and usually I have an attorney kind of do all my paperwork for me. So I give it to my attorney, Usually I have an attorney that represents me. So I give all the paperwork to the attorney. The attorney then gives it, um, sends it out to get the title check. And that title check should uh, only take about between three and, se and seven days. Three and seven days. Um, and what they're doing to make sure that there's no liens or judgments or anything on that title, that everything is clean so that they can sell me that house and I have free and clear title. Um, so if there's anything that is wrong, the attorney and the, the seller, we will figure it out. And if we can't figure it out, then we just kill the deal. But uh, usually it's all okay. Um, or they'll clean up whatever they gotta clean. So I will make sure that I, I order the title. So on day one, we're ordering the title. Three to seven days later, I put it on my calendar. But then by, by the third or fourth day, I'm checking in. Where's the title? They need a little bit more time. If it's past seven days, I'm like, come on, I need my title, let's go. Uh, the other thing that we, we will do is if I need funding, and let's say I'm going to buy it and I'm going to rehab it, then I'm going to, from day one, I'm checking in, I'm, I'm getting my finances, let's say I'm using hard money or I'm getting a private money loan, those take, let's say, 15 days, I am doing everything that I need to come and get done on that, that uh, put on the calendar, and I'm working to get everything done so that my funding is done and ready to rock and roll within the first 15 days. Um, uh, also, simultaneously, we're asking for any payoffs. We're requesting payoffs. Now, if I have an attorney, my attorney's handling all this, but I'm still keeping it on my calendar because I want to make sure that this bad boy closes fast. I want to close before schedule if I can. So, like, if I have, um, what, what are some of the payoffs? Requests. A mortgage payoff. Taxes. Any taxes owed. Any water. Any sewer. Um, any of those kinds of expenses, I want all of that to be checked out before that. So, again, on day one, title company typically checks those or my attorney and I'm I'm like all right we can have all this done back by day seven so a lot of things are happening all simultaneously and what your job is to do is to push everyone and make sure that that closing happens fast that's how we follow up all right step number five of five all right all right so step number five is to sell fast so now that we got we have the property on the contract and, the, and they're checking the title they're doing everything while that's all simultaneously happening, like let's say if we're gonna wholesale this property, if we're gonna wholesale the property, then while they're checking the title and doing everything that they gotta do, we are out there marketing that property and selling the property, and we're gonna we're looking to sell it fast. If we're gonna buy it and fix it and then sell it later, well that time we're getting all the contractors and everything that we kind of need inside that uh, property. I'm gonna talk about the two, those two strategies on selling it. Obviously, if, you, if you're gonna buy it, fix it, and rent it. It's simple, just when you finish fixing it up, just rent it. But the other ones are a little bit, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit more about those on the wholesaling. So if we are wholesaling the property, what do we do? We gotta wholesale it fast. So we need some strategies on wholesaling these properties fast and then who in the heck are we gonna wholesale them to? I'm gonna tell you right about that. So if we're gonna wholesale this property, we are going to be selling the property. The number one place to sell the property, uh, a wholesale deal, is to an investor. Right? So we're going to buy, sell it to another, uh, another investor that's going to buy it, fix it, and sell it. So we look for those types of, uh, of people. Um, we can wholesale to own an occupant that wants to buy a handyman special, but the reality is it's always going to be, 90% of the time is going to be an investor, and you want to, if you're going to wholesale, you want to sell it to an investor. Why? Because you want your check fast. How fast do you want your 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollar check to hit your bank account? You want it fast. 
Um, and so you want to make sure that those processes are happening and you and you speak into the right audience. So um, we're, we're, our main target on wholesale is another investor. And we're going to talk about marketing in a second. So, but if you are going to renovate the property um, and you're going to sell it to the end consumer, then you, when it's time to come and sell it, you're probably just going to use a realtor. And um, when you're using a realtor, what I would come and say is that you want to find a, the best selling realtor in that area. I have a lot of friends that are realtors. I never use them for the most part. Unless they, they, I will use them to buy all day long. But when it's time to sell, I want someone that knows that one little area. I'm, wherever that house is, they have to be the best top selling agent in that area. Why? Because I want them, because they'll know the area. They'll know the value of the areas. Uh, of that area, they will also probably have people that are ready to buy in that area. If not, they know all the other realtors that know that area. So it's about speed. They'll get my house so lightning fast versus just like my friend that just has not a license and knows nothing about this area and is not even a good marketer. I want to make sure that that house gets so lickety split fast as fast can be. Boom. That's how we've done hundreds and hundreds of deals. So. Let's talk about some marketing in this. Marketing is the next word. Watch. Whew. Right. So now we're selling houses fast. We need to come and market those bad boys. What are we going to come and do to, to, uh, for marketing to sell these houses fast? Right. So here's uh, I'm going to give you ten different ways on how we sell houses fast. We do a three day training, and that three day training, oh my god, we probably have like forty different ways on how to sell fast. And so we go really deep inside there. We spend a lot of time. But right now, I'm going to give you the top 10. I'm going to give them to you really fast, right? So number one, you can send an email out to a database. If you haven't built a database, stop building one. But if anybody that you know that might be interested, any friends or family, just send them this deal. Tell them, hey, I got a property. I'm looking at wholesale. Tell them, and you'd be surprised who would buy that. Um, number two, you can uh, post an ad on Craigslist. Number three, you can post an ad on Zillow that you're selling this handyman special. Um, you could go to networking events and hand out flyers. Um, and what else could you do? You could go to other other uh, investors and uh, that are, that say we buy houses and sell the house to them. Remember, you're looking for an investor anyway. Um, you can post ads on your social media, on your own social media, but you can also, which is totally different, is posting ads uh, about that property or letting just letting people know um, on social media real estate investing groups. Why? Is that a good place? Because they're hanging all hanging out, saying, "Hey, I buy houses in this in this area." So, yeah, give me something. They're hungry for deals. Uh, you can go to you can go to local meetup groups, and they have a local meetup group live, and they also have a website, so you can go on that. That's number nine. And number ten is you could actually list it with a realtor and and just wholesale it that way. You're gonna take less profit in there, but that's okay. Um, if you if you're gonna make fifteen thousand and you only make ten thousand dollars, maybe not so bad, right? Um, and I'm gonna say the last thing is just there's so many different ways on how to sell. Just get creative, dig deep, work to get the house sold. This is how you get these houses sold. This is how we bought and sold over 700 houses by using a lot of these strategies. And I am constantly using the five steps to success. When I fall off track, I go back to the five steps to, to success. Why? Because it helps me to get back on track and refocuses me in how what is important and what do I have to get done? When I get when I when when my team any new team member comes on, I talk about the five steps of success to them. So, hope you enjoyed all of this information. Uh, I know that I spoke fast. There's so much more. Yes, yes, yes. We have so much more information for you. So why don't you just stay tuned? And um, if you want to reach out to us, please reach out. Feel free. There's somewhere around here, below this, above this, sideways, somewhere around here. There'll be information about how we can help you get to your next. Um, your next level. We are going to be doing some local, some excuse me. We are going to do some live trainings, and so uh, be on the lookout for our live trainings because that's where we spend three days. We go deep. We take a deep dive in all of this. Three full days. Our objective is to help you to be highly, highly, highly profitable and make tens of thousands of dollars, just like our successful students. And um, we want that for you. So I'll talk to you soon. My name is Jason Rodriguez. I'm out. We're buying houses. Go buy houses. Talk to you soon.